All right, y'all. Here we go. Back at it again. We got charge on still. We do. We are ready this time. I'm starting to wish I'd picked up those points for uh, levitate power. Actually, you know what? Let me see something. I feel like I might be able to just use whatever here. I think everything is like upgraded, essentially. find out. Yes, it is. Everything is... is... Alright, so this is great then. Actually, let me do spin, and I'll, uh, I'll put Pierce on. That way I can pop shot off. So the trend is each zone is going to spawn a named guy. After the named guy dies, I can progress on forward.
Ooh. Dylan's in a coma. I don't know if there's anything of him left in there. If he'll ever find his way back. The portal's been closed, but the hiss is still in the oldest house. And the lockdown can't be lifted as long as any trace of it remains. I'm working on a solution with my management team, but there is still a long road ahead. I'm the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. We're in this together. You... ...and I. Bam. Man, that... Oh, man. I honestly don't even know where to start. Um... So, I will say outright, this has definitely been one of the best games of 2019, I think. In terms of, like, a narrative experience and a story, like, this game had me, like, I would record an episode, and I would record an episode, and record an episode, and record an episode, and record an episode, and then be like, I really need to get lunch, and record, like, two more, and then get something to eat, and then record, and record, and record, and record. And, like, given I'm a huge, huge nerd for sci-fi to begin with, like, you know, stuff like X-Files, The Fringe, The Expanse, you know, Stranger Things, anything that, that has, like, weird sci-fi, pseudoscience, stuff like that going on, um, I am all about it. It is, it is 100% just fucking shovel it into my mouth. So, this game was, like, all of that rolled into a bundle and a narrative experience that you could play. Um, so let's talk about it. Um, all in all, I think the, the gameplay itself was actually really, really smooth. Um, you know, movement and shooting and all that, there, there wasn't any issues whatsoever. Um, pretty much any time that I would die, it was usually because, like, I made a mistake, you know? Like, I, I wasn't paying attention to the floor that was collapsing out of me, or I jumped off of something and didn't pay attention to my levitate running out. So the controls were were top-notch. Um, I do think it plays better with a controller, just because, you know, on the keyboard, how I mentioned, um, you would use E to uh, for the, the throw, so you could, like, grab and throw stuff. And it's kind of hard to hold E to hold an object to throw it and then still use WASD for movement. So, I don't know. Um, I'm sure you could like rebind keys, but just just food for thought. I think if you're looking to play this game, I think the experience is a lot better uh, using a controller. I just feel like the movement was was more there. Um, moving on from the gameplay to the sound design, the sound design in this game was phenomenal. Um, you know, between like the the weirdness going on and then like the sound of the gunshots, the sound of things exploding, the sound of things hitting into things. I was a big, big fan of their sound design here. Um, as for the story, um, before we go into the story, one thing I want to touch on is the the kind of like game slash live action, because that's usually a very mixed bag with games, and I think they did it really well here. You know, all the, the NPCs and in-game characters had uh, very realistic um, renders of them, and then when they they would add in you know like the, the the film grades that were done with live actors i thought that was really nice it didn't feel like they were forcing live action into the game it felt like they did it in a way that was uh, very fluid and kind of conductive to the story so i think that was awesome um as for the story itself man what a just absolute wild ride and there's still like there's still stuff that i have 
tons and tons of questions about, and I'm sure I could answer a couple of those at least, uh, kind of digging into the records that I've been picking up. But, I mean, my main takeaway is, you know, Dylan and Jesse opened the portal using the slide projector over an ordinary that invited a bunch of shit in, namely the Hiss, as well as uh, Polaris. Hedron, I'm still not 100% on the deal with Hedron, because there was, there was a thing about, you know, Hedron is actually an amplifier, maybe, and so, you know, that was somehow amplifying Polaris, but Polaris was actually inside Jesse, so there, there's, there's a lot of questions that, personally, I would like to get a little bit more clarity, um, like what happened to, to Dr. Darling, is that, like, a setup for a DLC, or is he in one of the alternate realms, like, where is he and apparently he's been working with hedron for a while you know at least not like working with it as it being an entity but working with it and developing the the hedron resonant devices and all this other stuff so there's there's a lot of questions i have still um that i hope either get answered in a dlc or are answered by me playing the game and, and digging more um but there's a fair amount of content left too i feel i mean there's that whole area that was covered by that that rot or whatever it is that I didn't even know was on the map until I just kind of was like, oh, I wonder what's down here. Uh, so anyway, in terms of story, I mean, the story was confusing as balls, but I do think the game did a good job of taking breaks to explain things. Like when you first meet, um, what's her name? Pope, I think it was. Emily Pope, the director assistant lady. You know, you can run through and she's like, oh, here's, you know, here are what objects of power are, here is what the director does, here is what our bureau does, and you're kind of like, okay, all right, that's pulling a lot of things together. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of just loops, I feel, that are still kind of open that I'm curious about, that I want closed. So, all in all, I, I like the story, I think, for, for what they were going for, for like the, you're going to be confused for half of this, and it's a crazy sci-fi adventure, I think it hit the nail on the head, because I kept playing it. It was like, you know, it was like when you find a a new show to watch on Netflix, and you're like, I gotta see what happens next, I gotta see what happens next, I, I gotta see what happens next. That's what it felt like playing through this game. Um, let's see, sound design, we discussed gameplay, controls, um, music, for having copyright music off, the songs that were in the game, I mean, there wasn't a ton, which honestly I didn't mind because the sound design was so good, but when we had like that, that random 80s rock out song when we were in the labyrinth that shit was awesome like i mean i guess that's an original song they wrote for the game but like that was i was jamming out man like i was like yes this is this is 100 up up in my lane how <laughs> shit i like um I'm trying to think what i what i didn't like so one thing one thing i'll notice um so i was keeping a, a close eye on on the frame rate and stuff um and the DirectX 12, that's not really a fault of the game. That's, you know, just my recording setup, not being able to do RTX and also recording all of it at the same time. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where you pretty much need a second PC to pull that off. But one thing I did notice, even on DirectX 11, was those little enemies that you couldn't kill them. They were essentially just balls that were constantly surrounded by matter and picking up whatever was around them at that given time. Every now and then I noticed that we I would see frame drops when they, in particular, got into the screen. And I mean, obviously, it's a nature of that enemy. That enemy is just grabbing every single object it can in the vicinity, and then the game's trying to render all that shit spinning around. Um, but besides that, everything seemed to run pretty smoothly. So I think they did, they did an overall overall good job, but maybe those one enemies could have been looked at. I know, that sounds super nitpicky, but like, honestly, I don't have many complaints here. This this was a, this was a like, start playing and don't put it down. You are now the director. Your work is not done. The crisis is not over. I got my director outfit. Yeah, I'm like, bump, bump, bump. Lady Sue. Shawshank Redemption. That's the name of the movie I was thinking of earlier. Ongoing his Not threat. Important. Search the dangerous depths of the oldest house for classified bureau it. secrets and hidden clues. So yeah, we still learn a lot more going in. And it's like, uh... I get any other outfits? Director suit, candidate P6, 
Office assisted. I, I like the civvy suit. Abilities. Uh, yeah, let's go on in. This up. What's this? Yes, ground slam. There it is. That's what I've been looking for all this time. Just had to go up there and get it. Um, I mean, all in all, I I would probably put this at. I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. And the only reason I'm really docking a point is we are 23 episodes in, so that's slightly over 10 hours, which I do think is a little short. Um, you know, I get there's there's only so much story you can tell in a narrative game, but as I also mentioned, there's a couple loops that weren't closed. What happened to Darling? You know, and I know there's there's shit I can explore still in places that I, I haven't fully fleshed out, but I do still have questions about certain things, and I want those questions answered. And so I think they could have, I mean, I guess, you know, you could argue, well, hey, you can keep playing right now and, you know, you'll, you'll be able to probably find half those answers. But I would have liked if some of that stuff was, was part of the experience, like going in and, and just finding out more. I mean, it's, it's cool that the game gives you the option to kind of go off on your own and discover this stuff. Like, what, is this, what is this thing over here? How do I reach it? How do I reach this building that looks to be floating off on its own. Do I have to go there through Parasyke? I don't even know. We're just pretty much going to bebop around for a little bit here um, until I wrap up this episode. We've done, you know, essentially everything at this point. Well, everything for the, the main story, I should say. It'd be good to, to clarify that. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, this, is, this, this was a... I had a lot of fun with this. I like that. I gotta go back to my regular guns, because now that we're not in a super land anymore, I'm back to being a potato. Actually, that's another complaint. Every now, like right now, why? Why is my head gotta be over it? I, I feel like seeing as soon as I, I redirected it, it fixed. But that is one thing that I noticed happened quite a bit. Where, damn, that ground slam is no joke. Um, but yeah, the the character model getting stuck over the reticle. That's that's pretty oof to me. Because when that happens, you know, you're it's literally. It's, it's stopping you from being able to, to really see what you're shooting. Damn, I should have picked up Ground Slam earlier. Ground Slam is just brutal, man. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can find a way over to that thing. Extra sensory lab, is that it? It might lead there. Extra blip. Hmm. I don't know. This may be one of those things where I just need to do a uh, Oh, no, hang on. Sensory tank. Oh, these are sensory tanks. This is not how I get over there. After Tuki investigation. Japanese citizen residing in Tokyo. Series of guided imagery experience audio recordings. So they wanted to obtain it. They thought it was another thing. Oh, no, that is it. Extra sensory lab. Okay. Well, that's nice. So I explored that. I don't know what I haven't explored yet. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and close things on out, put a wrap on this series. But this was a lot of fun, and there is still, like, side quests and shit to do. Um, namely, the whole area with the rot, so... I may, uh... I may do a live stream just to kind of... 
close out some uh, some loose ends, you know, jump in and do a little bit of exploring and fighting with all the powers, and you know, that might be fun. So, anyway, thanks for coming on by. I hope you guys enjoyed watching Control. Definitely a uh, definitely a fun game to wrap the summer up with too. This was a pretty kick-ass adventure. I think it's set us up in a good spot for all the other coming titles we have coming up. Uh, as for the next game in particular that will be on the channel, um, I'm not entirely sure. More than likely it'll be a combination of Iceborne, uh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and then of course Borderlands 3. But as I mentioned, I'm going to do those very similar to Remnant in the sense that I'll be streaming those titles a bunch and then uh, breaking the streams up into like smaller... Uh, smaller, you know, singular parts, essentially. So I've already gone and actually updated some stuff, so it'll be a lot easier to uh, to basically make those those little bookmark tabs in the streams. But anyway, thanks for coming by. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Definitely had a fun time playing this one for you. And I'll catch you soon enough with something new.